This is the Grade 12 IT Prac exam from November 2020 for the end of the year exam. And we're looking at question two. We're starting with the SQL part for this video. So question two of your exam paper is normally divided up into two parts. One is for SQL and one is for normal database programming. So let's have a look. So they give us a there are two tabs. They show us what the details are of the tables that we're going to be using. They tell us that it's TBL employees. So there's some details about the employees and there's some details about the hour logs. I'm assuming that the hours that they've worked. So you can go read up about the different um details in those tables. So we're going to be using these ADO tables, which have been sorted out for us. They've been declared for us. Um, I think they've been declared dynamically. And there's our little lovely little buttons we're going to use for the SQL. Or SQL. So first question, let's go into it. Let's do all of them quickly. So when to display all the information. So we're doing, we're doing SQL. So let's go to our program. There we go on this. And all we have to do is write the code in that little string there. And the moment we not change anything, we know it's a select statement, select, and they want us to select all the fields. So select star straight away. From which table are we working with? We are working from the TBL employees table. So TBL employees. So TBL employees, right. Now, if, then we would have a where clause if there's criteria. I don't see any criteria. It's first sorted in ascending order of job title. So we're going to say, so there's no where clause. We're just going to go straight to order by job title, ascending order. Make sure that this ascending is in capital letters. It is case sensitive for that. And then hourly wage in descending order. So then we put a comma and what was it? hourly wage, hourly wage. Make sure you spell it exactly like it is in the database hourly wage in descending order. I think that's right. Is that right? It looks so simple. Let's try it. Let's run it. Let's see if we get the same results as they do over here. We want it to look something like that. Obviously, that's just the first few records. So there we go. It runs. Let's run it. Hourly. Oh, Mr. Long, you spelled hourly wrong. Fantastic. Go back. Yeah, I knew I spelled something wrong. Hourly wage. Not hour wage. Hourly wage. Let's do that. Then if we go look at the... Yeah, Franklin, Ricardo, Franklin, Ric oh, that looks like it's spot on, eh? Fantastic. So that's the first one, yeah? Yeah, that's good. That's the first one done. Fantastic. Next, go to the next one, number two. One or 2.1.2. .2. So display just those. Okay, so this is select again. So we display, so we go to 1.2. There it is. Select which fields, which fields, Mr. Long? It is employee ID, last name, first name. Employee ID last name first name make sure that you spell them exactly like they are in the database make sure that from which table now they don't tell me which table but if i look uh just this one this one was from the tbl employees you can see there's a first name last name employee id so it must be just from the employee table again so from tbl oh i did two froms tbl employee is sorry employees okay now what is the criteria only those who have a engineer in the job title now you'll notice like the job title has the word engineer somewhere in it so we want the word the job title contains the word engineer so it mustn't equal engineer it must have engineer somewhere in it okay so that's what we want okay so we know that franklin is one of them um so there you can see franklin is one of them because he's a civil engineer um so that's how do we get contain so where the job title job title is not we want to say equals engineer now that's not going to work if we say equals engineer that's not going to work because none of them are exactly engineer we want engineer to be part of it so we don't want to say equals we want to use the like and then the like will have to have in, if you remember, a star is a wild card. So you put a star for anything on that side and a star for anything on this side. Maybe it's engineer of something. So that means that I don't care what the text is in front of the word engineer. I don't care what the text is after the word engineer, as long as the word engineer is somewhere in it. But that's how it is in SQL. But in Delphi, it doesn't like these stars because the stars, I think, sometimes clash with the star that they tries to interpret like for all. So Delphi actually changes those stars. We need to, when we use it in Delphi, we need to use these, the percentage signs. Instead of stars, we use percentage signs for the like. So let's see that. 
Let's run it to see if it works. And we're going to go engineers. There we go. So those are all, there we go. That looks very similar to our list. I think that's pretty sharp. There we go. Wesley Brown. Wesley, oh, there we go. So that looks quite spot on. It mentions all the engineers. Fantastic. If you notice there, just a little side note there, 4-4. Four, four. We've done eight marks already, and they're quite easy. Okay, so let's go to number 1.3. We want to list the different job titles. So just display all the job titles, but each job title must be displayed only once. Okay, so where we want the job titles from? I'm assuming we want the job title. I don't see I don't see job title in there's no job title in the hour log. So it must be job title from the employees table. So let's go back here. Ooh, lots of scrolling is on. Okay, so let's go. We're gonna to go to the next button. Number three, job titles. Now so how do I I can se select job title from TBL employees. That's easy. There was not the only criteria is that we must display each job once. Now, if I do the, just that, that's technically it, 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 it works. Technically. But it displays some jobs multiple times. So there's crane operator a couple of times. I don't want that. I want each one individually. And all I have to do here is have to do distinct in front of the field that I only want one of each of those options. Distinct job title. So if I run that. Now I will get a unique list. So crane operators only once and there's no more crane operators. So there's a unique list and you use the distinct. If you use distinct, you might get a distinction. Terrible joke, it's not a terrible joke. Okay, remove records. So oh yeah, we're going to remove records. This is the next question. The number of records with incorrect data on the hour logs have been captured. Remove all the records where the hours worked is 99. So if the hours worked is 99, we must remove them. So remove. So we're not inserting, we're not changing, we are we're not editing, we are updating, we are deleting. So let's go, we're going to write a delete. Now it's always delete. And then you must say, which table are we deleting from? So we are deleting from TBL hour logs. Will they tell us TBL hour logs? Make sure you spelled it correctly, hour logs, where the hours worked, it's actually exactly how they say it, where the hours worked, is that the field called? Hours worked, worked, not word, is equal to 99. Is that it? That's exactly how they say it. Delete from hour logs, where the hours worked equals 99. I think it's just like that. So the, the way English is done, is it actually tells us exactly how to do it. So let's remove all the records. And we updated, base has been updated. Now, if I go here, actually, I'm going to restore the database. I didn't even check you see if it works. This restores the database. So if I restore it, yes, everything's been reset. So if I look here, hours worked. Are there any 99s? Your sweet pathology. Are there any 99s? This is going to take forever if I find a 99. Maybe there aren't any hours logged. Oh, sweet Bartholomew. There must be some 99s in here. I'm going to check quickly. While well, I went through, I couldn't find anyone. Maybe I missed one, but I couldn't find any. So, but our code should work. Our code should work. Delete from the hour logs if there's anyone that's I got a 99. Ooh. Okay, let's go to the next one. Where's the next question? Let's go to number one, 1.5, the overtime. Okay, so this one is a nine mark one. This is quite a complicated one. So you're gonna have to stick with me because it's quite a complicated, intricate little one. And I'll show you how you can get at least some marks even if you don't know how to do this one. So employees are paid overtime for each hour exceeding eight hours. Each hour exceeding eight hours, okay? Per, per day. So they, they the first eight hours a day, they, they get paid normal rates, but only after those eight hours do they get paid extra. Okay. An employee's overtime is double its regularly hourly, hourly rate. Okay. Display the total number of each employee has been paid for overtime hours formatted as a currency. Display the amount using, so there's a, some sort of calculation that's been done. And then only the last name. So per last name of the person. So first of all, we are, we need the last name and we need to work out the hourly rate and so on. So if you just look at these tables, 
you will notice straight away that we are we need the hours worked and the hour like the hours worked, but we also need the hourly wage, their rate, and their last name. So we're actually getting data from both tables. So straight away we are working with two tables. So they want us to display the last name. So straight away, let's go. I want to display select the last last name and some other stuff from now we're getting it from both tables so in tbl employees comma tbl our is it, what's it called what's the table called our logs we get it from both tables now the moment you've got two tables you need to put in that criteria that specifies what's the link between the two well the link is this employee id that's what links them. So employee ID, this employee ID is connected to that employee ID. If you read the details about the tables, it specifies the relationship. So employee ID of the employees is the same as the employee ID of the hour logs. Now you can't go and say what where um, employee ID is equal to employee ID because it's going to go like, okay, which one, which, 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 which one's what? Okay, so it's TBL employees dot employee id is the same as the tbl our logs dot employee id so that's the connection between the two okay so that's the one thing okay so we remember this hourly wage that's there and so hours worked so they're going to get for so we want to take that hourly wage and minus eight from it so the hours worked we must minus eight from it so we're going to take that's the calculation so that calculation is going to be somewhere over here where we've got the last name. So last name, we're going to have some sort of calculation and it's the hourly, it's the hourly rate, what's it called? Hour, hours worked, sorry, hours worked. Hours worked minus eight. Did I spell it correct? Hours worked, there we go. That's how many hours they are. That's how many hours they are going to get for overtime. It's anything above the eight. So hours worked over eight okay so i assume they're all working over eight, at least eight hours so if that's true then they get double if you remember sorry for the scrolling if they get for each they get double their regular wage so if you remember there so that's the the hours worked but it's going to be double the hourly wage so it's going to take that amount that hours worked and we're going to multiply it by the hourly wage times two you can put that in brackets it won't make a difference but that's the hourly rate the overtime rate and that's the number of hours they worked overtime you multiply the two so the hourly wage so that's what we get now in this hour logs table there's going to be multiple times that obviously this employee worked so we want to work it out for this is when this employee 566 they worked 10 hours yeah but later on they might work another 10 hours so we actually can't just work individual records we need to sum all of them all of the times that this employee has worked so we're actually going to sum all of this together so this is an aggregate field so all the, this whole calculation here actually needs to be the sum of each and every field so we're using an aggregate function sum all so take that last name and sum all of their hours worked minus eight times about their hourly rate times two so we are summing this now the moment you are having an aggregate function and you've got another field you need to group it by that other field now if you're forgetting about where what how we must do the order the way i remember is smell, smelly feet will give horrible odors so remember that so select from where group by having order bar so group bar must come after the where smelly feet smelly feet will give horrible odors okay so that tells me the order so it's select then the from then the where then the group bar then the having then the order bar so we after the the where clause we get a group bar so after the where clause there yeah, right yeah oh this is getting quite long this so long we can now group bar and it's always grouped by the field that's not in the calculation which in this case is last name so if you've got an aggregate function that's combined with a normal field you will always have that group bar and you group by the field that's not involved in the calculation okay Whew, I told you this is complicated and then the last little bit is that we must display it to a currency 
So let's first test to see if this works before I start doing the currency thing to make sure that it's all done. Okay, so we must display it as a currency. So let's see if we get 2854 as our first answer. Let's see if it works. Hopefully there are no errors. Over time. Ooh. Can I find the table employees? Okay, that's because Mr. Long's obviously spelt something wrong here. Employees. Employees, Mr. Long. Let's make sure I didn't spell anything else wrong there. Let's test it now. There we go. Okay, so we're getting that value. There we go. It is getting that value. So we need to now format this as a currency. Format this whole calculation. Do, 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 do. This whole thing as a currency. So I'll put in the word currency. And I want to give it a nice name. What name did they want us to use? They said they use it as overtime AMT. As overtime AMT for short for a overtime amount. Okay. There we go. That looks like it's legit. Yeah, it's working now. Um, just remember when you a couple of things to remember from this to get all the marks. Remember when you are using first of all when you're using two tables, when you are using both tables. There's employees and and our logs. Make sure that you've got this where clause which specifies what the connection is. When you are using an aggregate function and other fields, make sure that you use the group by the other field. And if you're using an aggregate function, just a little tip, you can't have other calculations outside of this. So every all the calculation must happen inside the aggregate function. You can't have little parts out of it, so that it won't work then. Okay, so there we go. That's the SQL. It's quite a bit, um, but hopefully you can get all the marks. How many marks were that? It was quite a bit. So 9 plus the 2, that's 11. That's 14 plus... 40, that's 22 marks. There we go. 20 marks. That's quite a lot of marks for the SQL. You can do it. For more videos from this exam paper, as well as the other videos from other exam papers, go to our playlists on our YouTube channel. Click on that subscribe button. Leave us a like. Leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.